Hello, how you doing? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Here's a green screen. Um, I've had one for the last two years. I don't really use it much. I probably should. How you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Visa, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Of course, before we do start, we are on the way to 300,000 subscribers. You see that number right there? Right there. And now it's there. And now it's here. You see that number? Let's try and hit that, yeah? Okay, we are less than 10,000 away. Thank you all so much for the love on the channel in the last couple of weeks. It's been, in, it's been immense, and I should probably use a green screen more because it'd be better quality content. So I'm also holding the microphone, but I couldn't disconnect it right, so it looks kind of weird, but we're gonna have to just, just roll with it pretty much. Yo, do you play FIFA 22? Yeah. Is your team bang average? You absolute pathetic piece of- You're saying that to the viewers? No, obviously. Ah, okay. I mean you. Do you face teams like this? You can't keep getting away with it! Do you know there's a way to get coins? Why are you shouting at me? <laughs> then go to usurvive.com for the cheapest and most reliable place to buy your coins on FIFA 22. Link is down below in the description. And also use code VISA at checkout to get a discount. Day has come, hasn't it? FIFA 22. Now, of course, you guys may know me that, um, you know, I've got um, a history with FIFA and my entire channel has been largely FIFA for the last several years. I mean, six, seven years almost. It's been a long time. So I'm a big advocate of FIFA, a big fan of FIFA. Oh, oh, oh yes, come on, we packed a blue. It's been my life almost for the last eight years other than the last 12 months. Now, of course, I've had a daughter Beautiful, of course, as you know. So maybe that could be a big part of why I've not played FIFA as much because I've got other responsibilities. But even before she was born, I, I still weren't really feeling it. This is a retrospective review of the game cycle as as a retrospective review. It's, can't, it's a review after the fact. After the game is essentially done and now we're hitting team of the season, we're now going to go into the summer, which there'll be, there'll be some promos where you're going to get like a bunch of high where the play is almost guaranteed, which may bring some people back. But for the most part, the game cycle is done and we'll be looking on to FIFA 23 very soon. We're seeing more and more information come out about FIFA 23 by the day. So the game cycle is essentially done and for most people, they see team of the season once it's done that's the end of, that's the end of fifa for for a majority of the not or, not the entire fan base not the entire community but for a large amount especially the casuals we are going to break down this game into five different categories maybe six we'll see how we do here going into for me how i see it. so we'll start off with the positives right so the positives of fifa 22 so for me the main positive of this game is <laughs> it sounds kind of really bad but it is a positive but in other ways it's a negative and that is that this game is by far without a shadow of a doubt the most casual friendly fifa there is to date when it comes to a pure casual guy that works nine to five or works most days of the week goes to school doesn't have that much time to really put that much time into the game like most people to be fair like not everyone can be a, a piece of you should be like me, right? Okay, people have actual things and jobs to do, right? So this game is the most casual friendly FIFA there is to date, which is a good thing as there's a lot more casuals, of course, obviously, than hardcore players. So by putting a game out to a casual fan base, it makes it a lot more open for more people to get involved. So that is a positive. And what I mean by that is the fact that it's, this is the easiest it has ever been to get a good team. Now, of course, by the way, a main chunk of this will be Ultimate Team Heavy, as that is my um, expertise. That's my type of content. I don't do a lot of career mode. I do play a little bit, but I do get, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I, quite, I, get, I get very bored of career mode way too fast. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm older. I don't know why. Maybe because a game kind of feels like it's been the same for several, several years. And after you do one save with one team, it just kind of feels like it's just the same save over and over again. You know, the same players have the same potential and it's like, okay, now what? I don't really get that stuck into it and have that connection in the same way that I would with Football Manager. The beauty of Football Manager is when you get a player, it feels like it's different each time. A lot of different players go to different teams and some players do a lot better than others. So you can have a save where Alexander Isak, the Swedish wonder kid, goes to Liverpool in my save and wins the Ballon d'Or. But then in another save, my, my journeyman save, I was like manager of Sunderland, right? And Isak stayed at Real Sociedad and 
wasn't even like a elite player, not even near an elite player. So that is two examples of two versions of the same player in two different saves with completely contrasting potentials and possibilities that they actually achieved. When it comes to FIFA, it feels like it's so streamlined in so many areas that it feels like it's never really like your save. It feels like your save is very much similar to your friend's save. And that's that element of your unique creativity that I don't really feel that connection with when I play career mode. Anyway, that's my kind of career mode um, thoughts given right there. So on to ultimate. So what do I mean when I say that this is the most casual friendly FIFA? And that is that it is incredibly easy to get the best players in the game. And by that, I mean Ronaldo's, Messi's, Neymar's, so on and so forth. By the time it was February, you had Ronaldo going for 200k, when in comparison to this time last year, just in the last FIFA, it was worth 800,000 coins, and the year before that, it was worth up to 1.52 million. You get my point here? So it is insanely easy to get the players that you would want in the game, like the Ronaldo's Messi's. I believe like two weeks in the game, there were no more than 13 gold players that was over 100,000 coins. So therefore, it creates two dynamics. Number one, that it is much more easy to get the high rated players because it doesn't cost that much money to get them. But the negative is that once you get packs, if it's by rewards, SBCs, or you open packs by sp spending FP, as a lot of people do, sadly, that what happens is that for you to actually get to that high coin balance, it could take longer. Let's say you pack yourself like a pretty decent player. Let's say like around January time, you're like a, let's say a human son, right? A decent, you know, Premier League player. That'd be a good player for most teams. Let's say you pack him around, let's say December, January time. So, so that's like three months in a cycle, that's pretty early on. Human Son's around 30,000 coins, and that can go for a lot of similar players, like a Mohamed Salah, like a Sadio Mane, like those kind of top level attackers. You know, you want to get, let's say, the next step above a Ronaldo, Neymar, Messi, which is a Kylian Mbappe, like the only actual worthwhile gold card beyond that reach, like the only one card that is gold that is worth a lot of money still and you gotta pack like how many human sons i think let's say in december let's use december because there's a three months in the game and most people are still playing the game and this is my main base point here you've got to pack 30 sons to get yourself one killing mbappe which son is already quite hard to pack to begin with so how long do you think it's going to take for people to get to that next day job? So, like, kind of the baseline good players, where there's, like, Messi's and Aldo's, is, like, very, very cheap. But to get to that next level, which is the icons and, like, the top-level promo cards, they feel so far away. You could barely ever pack them because they're never really in packs unless you're very, very lucky. And then that next step up, you've got to put a lot of time in the game by then. So, what happens is that most players you pack in packs is worth nothing, and to get to that next step, step up, it feels like it's an impossibility unless you spend a lot of time in the game. But, again, for most casuals, they may not even care. They may not even care about, you know, not wanting it on a Ronaldo, which, of course, nowadays, now at this stage of the game, you can get mad cards. And this is leading to point number two here, and that is there is no feeling of satisfaction when it comes to building your team in this game. And what I mean by that is that you can get such a good team so fast on this game that it feels like the levels of progression you, you you reach the peak of that so fast that once you once you reach that insane team with the Neymars and Ronaldos and so on and so forth once you reach that it feels like the next step up is either so far away or it's just a replacement why did you enjoy FIFA huh tell me why did you enjoy playing Ultimate Team the reason why, I would imagine, I mean, why I enjoyed playing it was the feeling of progression. By you playing Weekend League for Champions back in 17, 18, 19, even 20 for the most part, at least halfway through anyway, that you were week by week playing Foot Champions, doing your rewards, doing your rivals or seasons, and you were making sure that you were chipping away of getting that next big upgrade for your team. And that one next upgrade made a difference. You felt a big difference in your team, and because most players are still quite expensive, it took a bit of time to get to that upgrade. But you still had a pretty mid-level team, maybe a good level team, but not that very good level team where there's the Messi's and Ronaldo's and, you know, that's the next obvious step up. Now, play a weekend league 
to get probably bang average rewards, but you may have enough from them to get yourself that one next upgrade for your team. And you are always progressing weekend by weekend, getting seen much better. With this FIFA, my main issue is that you already reached that insane team so fast because there's there's promos every single week there's SBCs thrown in the market every day because if there's no content in there daily then people will say the game is dead for some reason remember that we used to go like months without a single promo remember when SBCs didn't exist what do what do you think we did back in 15 oh yeah play the game most people they think the game's dead because they can't do SBC and grind that each day how about just play the game? That is seen like such an impossibility nowadays, which blows my mind. Like, people don't play this game to actually play the game. They do it to do some sort of card collection simulator. Probably makes a lot of sense because most people that don't really play the game, they don't play Weekend League to actually get good packs or good rewards. What I mean by that is that they do Weekend League purely just to stock up their club to get fodder to then do the SBCs. That is what FIFA is now. For the last six months, it is purely you do Weekend League and you do your rivals just to make sure you've got a bunch of cards in your club so that you've got enough fodder in there, which fodder, if you don't know, is just like players purely for SBCs, essentially just nothing players with good ratings at least, and that they will just be there, ready to go for the next SBC. If it's an icon pack, if it's a party bag, if it's um, 81 plus player pick upgrades, Christ, they make new things by the day. And this is why it harms the satisfaction of improving your team, because you can get to that insane level so fast by just grinding the game that within two weeks, you feel like you've already achieved the ultimate team. You know, unless you want to just count like the top level icons, which is almost impossible, like you've got an insane team. So it feels like once you get to that level, it's so hard to really improve on that and just go for like for like, which harms massively the progression system of the game for me. I don't play Weekend League to really get good rewards because this year they've changed it that you, it, it was harder to qualify for foot champs than actually play foot champs. Explain to me how that makes any sense. I, this year, went into Weekend League and purposely, purposely lost every single game. I lost every single game out of 20, pretty much. Other than, I think, two, because actually someone else gave me a win. So I didn't go out there to, to win any games of Weekend League, and I still got a red Mbappe. How does that make any sense? How can I purposely go out to lose? Out of 20 games, I lost 18 out of 20, and I still got a red Mbappe. Mbappe. It's backwards. So the reward system feels so easy for, with foot champions. That should be the competitive nature of the game, which is casual friendly, I guess, because you can do you can do well and get your free informed player picks. By the way, informs are dead. So feels like you're not really achieving anything really because you can get easy you can get great rewards by winning only a handful of games. So again, as a streamer, I can't really care about it. I can't make it feel intense because getting 20 and 0 doesn't really make that much of a difference in comparison to getting 9 wins. So is the gameplay worthwhile? Is it good for gameplay, right? So playing the actual game, how is it? And you know what? I'm annoyed because I actually quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it for the first week or something. Two weeks. The first two weeks of game, it was, it was hard. It was hard. You actually had to learn the game a bit. You know, it wasn't that respon it wasn't that responsive. Maybe because of the ratings of players and the stats, maybe. You know, compared to nowadays, there's a lot there's a lot less stats now, I guess. But it felt like doing three balls was no longer as efficient because it was a lot more unpredictable. Again, maybe stats could be a part of that, but it felt like the game was was all around slower. You had to actually pass the ball, dribbling. First touches, it felt like there was some weight to it and that you've got to think about what you do next. Otherwise, you get caught out of possession and you can be counted on. And getting counted on was something that was serious because pace felt like it meant something. This was a game for the first two weeks. And you can go back to my initial videos and I said this. I said that I felt like the game, it's got a much bigger skill gap. You've got to actually know how to defend and know how to pass. And within like a month, again... It gets some patches and it destroys the game. It makes it brain dead and it is the most purely infuriating thing because you can give a 10 year old this game 
and teach them the Y button and the RT button. That's sprinting through the ball, by the way. And they can just know what that is and then the B button to shoot. And then they'll do well. They'll be in Division 4. Without a shadow of a doubt, because this game is just this game is just turned into a basketball match. It's through ball counter, through ball counter, through ball counter. And the annoying thing is that I want to play good football, or at least try to. Yeah, I've been playing FIFA since FIFA 03. I know how to play the game. I know how to read the movements of my opponents on where to dribble. Where should I fake to next? Back forth, back forth. I'll go this side. Using the left analog stick dribbling. I don't need any mad skill moves. I just need to just know where to pos position my player. That's all I need. I I love doing that. If you watch if you watch me play FIFA, I love just doing just left analog stick dribblings and just fooling my opponent. Go left, right, left. Oh, I go left again and just try to out out maneuver them. I love that. But sadly, it feels like I don't need to do anything, and the game just counters for me. So I can put my custom tactics to whatever, whatever the hell I want to put on it. It doesn't matter what I put on my custom tactics. Whatever will happen, they'll do the free ball runs all the time. I don't need to do anything. They'll just do it for me. And it feels like I've got to handicap myself by trying to play realistic football or good football. i got to handicap myself by trying to play this way. Otherwise... I'm just going to get countered on, and I'm going to miss great opportunities to just counter free ball, counter free ball, counter free ball. That would be almost guaranteed goals, because that's all the game keeps on doing. Without a shadow of a doubt, for me, this FIFA is the lowest skill gap FIFA. Um, it, it absolutely is. The midfield does not exist. It does not exist at all. Um, if, you, if they somehow do get the players back and they actually do go on a low block, they just control the CDM. You know, there's no point controlling the centre backs because if you control centre backs, then you would probably concede more. By you actually controlling your defenders, you concede more goals. Um, of course, this is not a 22 thing. It's been like this for like two, three years, but still, it's just crazy how that even happens. I would rather have FIFA 19, and I mean that to the bottom of my heart. I would rather have FIFA 19 because at least with that game, they, yes, there were so many broken things to the Lacoqueta, to the El Tornado crosses, to the green time headers, to the green time finesse shots, to the first time finesse shots, to the little dink pass where they hit it on the volley. There were so many broken things in that game. Kickoff glitches, Latin Ibrahimovic near post headers. But there's so many things, right? But at least in that game, it was so broken that at least it made it kind of fun. It wasn't football. It was absolutely not football. But if you really wanted to, you could play it realistically. You could. You could try and do some natural sort of passing moves, triangles, dribbling at a situation. Dribbling was great in that game. I really enjoyed dribbling in that game. Passing, nowhere near as locked on and automatic and magnetized as what it is nowadays. Nowadays, it's ridiculous. Sometimes you just do a free ball and just you just do it. Because even though you don't see a run, you still get rewarded for it. You can just go to the byline, just put a driven pass in the box. You can, you can have your player literally like behind three players. It doesn't matter. It'll just lock on to him. It is brain dead. So many times just do a through ball. Oh, there's a player up there. I'll get to him. Somehow, it'll curve around the player. Or the opponent's AI defender will just run out the way. They'll get to him. Don't worry. Just do, just do the through ball. It will lock on to him eventually. I don't want to rant too much, right? But this is just how I feel about this game and how I'm reviewing the game and how I see it. Gameplay-wise, for me, it's the lowest skill gap there is because it feels like it's incredibly easy to play because it's just free ball counter, free ball counter. And if you want to try to defend deep, you can just by controlling your um, your DM. And then, and then in terms of passing, it's usually just broken or just locks onto your player without even trying. And then when it comes to dribbling, it feels clunky at times and don't even get me started on the servers because I live in Poland. So therefore, I've got like minimum 50 ping. Even though I've got great internet, it doesn't matter because it's always inconsistent. Consistent. It's big 2022. I'm looking forward to crossplay. Oh, be best believe. Yeah, that's gonna be great. If I can't even connect to one person in the world on the same console, then imagine trying to connect to a guy that's on PC. Good luck on that one, lads. I, I, I mean, you know what? Knowing EA, it may actually work. And even with all of this, and by the way, this is just how I see it and how I review the game. Because you may really enjoy it. And I must say, if you do enjoy the game, then do not let my opinion ruin it for you. Don't let it ruin it for you. If you enjoy it, then you enjoy it. And I'm happy that you do enjoy it. Because, you know, it's a game. If you've got a lot of spare time and you want to put it in to do all these SBCs and grind it away and grind out the league SBCs and, you know, if you've got the time for it, this game is brilliant. You can just grind it for hours and hours and you can feel that that satisfaction of, like, collecting match tats. You know, like, match tats, like, card collecting, like, games, like, when you're growing up. It feels like that to me. Like, for me, if I just, like, purely see the game as, a, as like, a card collection game, I'm down for it. 
when I play FIFA, I play it without even a care in the world. I just play it and I'm like, whatever happens, all the, like, the poor gameplay stuff and the inconsistency of the gameplay, you know, I can just laugh at it and think, yeah, that's FIFA now. And then I go and get my packs and Weekend League and then I've got fodder now for SBCs and I got I can do some 81 Plus packs and some party bags who are always awful, by the way, and then do the, the 18,000th Icon pack, which, by the way, remember when Icons were, like, special? Remember, like, FIFA 16? 17, 18, 18 was the last one that getting like an icon, legend, was like, wow, having like one, having like a Vieri as your icon was like, wow, no, what, no way, you got Vieri, you got Vieri, that was like, mad, and now it's like, I don't know, to, I don't know how to compare it, like, I could pack Ronaldo, I could pack Messi, Ronaldo right now, and not even flinch, that's, like, it, I just have no connection to, like, any excitement because it feels like it's so, like, nothing nowadays. I could pack an Arnhem Ronaldo and not even flinch because I know that even if I used him in-game, he's still going to be trash. So it's like, oh, get in, I've got another card for my collection here. And when it comes to icon packs, when, you know, once you open an icon pack for the 50th time, surely at some stage it feels a bit less special. Surely. But then, that's the thing, they, they now make it even more insane. It's now, it's, now, it's gone from icon pack, or like base icon pack, to mid icon pack, then prime, then moments icon pack, and then you got a 92 plus attacker or mid pack, and then you got 93 plus attacker icon moments pack. It's like, how far are we going to go until it literally is like, you are guaranteed a Holic, Cruyff, R9, Maradona out of this pack. Like, that is, like, we cannot keep going until we just get to, you do this pack, you're getting R9 cry for Hullet guaranteed. Like, that's just the stage that we're going to get to now. I'm trying to think of what else to really add to this here. Because, again, I've not played the game too much. I, I played it the other day to get back into the game, see what's going on. It just feels the same. It just feels the same. I think, that's the, I think that's where I stand by this now. It just feels the same, really. There's not much really changing. It feels the same experience. And next year will be the same thing again. And you're going to restart again. And I will probably buy a new FIFA. I probably will. Because it's, you know, FIFA football. And you know what? I do greatly enjoy the first few weeks. Because it feels like you've, you're have learning something. The gameplay is usually quite interesting. That like you got to learn the gameplay. And then you patch it within a month. And then it's back to being just born again. So for the first month, I'm going to greatly enjoy the next game. I really will. Give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Because I feel like... Um, I think people may agree with me. But people who may already know that, you know, they may not already like me, may not see the video. But this is my retrospective review of FIFA 22. Out of 10, it's like a... For me, it's like a, it's like a 4. You know, it's, it's not like the worst game in the world, man. Like, if you've got time and effort to, like, put in a game, you can sink it in the game. And you can get some sort of satisfaction of collecting cards and that. And, you know, there is some enjoyment there when it comes to grinding the game and getting that kind of rush. But it just reminds me of just gambling. You know, it just reminds me of just gambling, like, your team. And I don't know, man. Like, when it comes to a game where actually playing the game is, like, a just an uncommon thing or thing that people don't really enjoy, then that isn't a game at that stage. It's just menu lobby simulator. And... That shouldn't be, like, imagine saying that about Warzone. Imagine Warzone being that, oh, I play Warzone to go and open crates in the menus. You know what I mean? It sounds crazy. I don't know, man. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. By the way, you're so close to 300,000 subscribers. It means a lot if you guys can drop that sub on the channel. That's been my review of FIFA 22. For me, it's just another one again, isn't it? It's just another one. Simple as that. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next time for another video. And stay safe.